I'm in the process of building a brand new building and on one of the walls in this building I want to cover the whole thing with antique barnwood. But when I searched around and started checking it all out, barnwood is very, very expensive. So I started, what can we say, experimenting on how can I make brand new wood into old barnwood. Now I saw some videos on YouTube, but I decided to take it upon myself and figure it out the quickest, easiest way to do it. Instead of mixing chemicals with, let's say, this right here, uh, you watch a lot of videos and it shows you how to take steel wool and you mix it in with vinegar and then you let this sit overnight and blah, blah, blah and all that. But what we're going to do is I'm going to speed the process up and I'm going to show you how to antique your wood like this right here. Now, I will want to say the harder the wood is, all right, the less dense, I guess you could say it's going to be, but it's still going to give it the effect of old barn wood. It's really quick and really simple. So let's go ahead and get started. And I want to show you how this process starts out. Now, you can see that these are used pieces of wood. Of course, it was brand new a few days ago. And the first thing you're going to look at is you see some screw holes here. So we know that old barn wood is going to have nail holes in them. And if you look right here, you can see there's some screw holes that I drilled out. But we're going to go ahead and take it one step farther. So we're going to say that this is the brand new piece of wood that we started with. Or hold on, look what I got. I got a brand new one here. And then we're going to come back to these. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get our drill out with a screw bit in it. And I'm going to go ahead and use an air drill. And what I got here, I got a hex head screw bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and then I'm going to screw it in the, in the wood randomly. Alright, just like this. And I'm, I'm going to show you what kind of mark that leaves. If you look right there, you can see the mark that it's leaving, which is an imprint. And then another thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take our screw gun or drill, whatever you're using, and I got some wood screws here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and screw the screws. Uh, these are actually sheetrock screws. And I'm going to screw it in to make an imprint. So I'm showing you this that you can use pretty much anything you want depending on what you want or what kind of action you're trying to uh, accomplish and by using the screw let me get that out of there you can see that it almost looks like a nail in perfection so using the screw or the hex head uh, self tapper screw will work wonders so now that we have went ahead and randomly placed our screw holes or our nail holes uh, you can see this one here kind of represent, that would actually look like a nail right there. See what I'm saying? What we're going to do next, we're going to move on to the process of antiquing our wood. I'm going to put one piece of wood here and i got another one here. I'm going to show you two ways that I would do it. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off with this one right here. And the next thing that I'm going to use is I'm going to go ahead and get my torch. Now before we go ahead and turn this torch on, uh, you can use a propane torch as well. This is called a cutting torch. And this is all I have. A propane torch will work the same way. I'm sure everybody knows what those are. So we're going to go ahead and get this going. Just like that. Let me go ahead and adjust that flame. And then we're going to put this one to the side. And then we're going to take this board here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn that wood so I got a grain in it. So we're just going to lightly burn it. And you can see by what I'm doing here, it's burning the wood. See what's going on? And it's bringing out that grain. But I'm going to take it one step further. And I am going to blacken it out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn my heat up just a little bit. Now we're really going to get it black.
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of steel wool and I'm going to go ahead and clean that wood off using steel wool. Now, let's go ahead and talk about uh, protection. Um, you always want to protect yourself, so we're going to go ahead and get our rubber gloves on. Just like this. And then we're going to go ahead and scuff that brown chalky stuff off of it. Do you see what's going on here? So now what we've done is we went ahead and burned our wood just like it would look old. Now look at those screw holes on there. Can you see that? Look at the way the screw holes came out. But we're not even done yet with this because what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and work on this one next. And what I'm going to do to this one before I do anything, I've got two tools here. i got a wire brush, which we're going to use on both of them. And then I also got a hammer. And what I'm going to do with the hammer is I'm going to randomly just tap a design in it. And then what I'll do is I'll take my hammer, and I was going to go ahead and use this, but we're going to use the hammer. And I'm going to gouge the wood, and when I say gouge it, I am going to take the sharp corner of the nail puller part of the hammer and just run it across just like this. I'm just going to grab one of them grains, and I'm going to run up the grain with it. And we don't want to get too nasty with it, we just want to get it to where the grain is is embedded and basically kind of popping out. Okay, now that we got both of our pieces of wood, one not burned and the other one burned, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this product right here, and you got to be very, very careful with this. This is called muriatic acid. I'm going to go ahead and put a coat on both of them. I'm showing you two different ways to do this. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the regular wood. I'm going to do it to that. And once again, when using toxic chemicals, always use your safety protection. All right, now that we have applied our muriatic acid to the boards, you can see the stain coming off them because the muriatic acid is basically eating the wood. We're going to go ahead and set those outside for approximately 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll bring them back in. So we'll go ahead and wait until those are dry and when they're dry we will come back. Safety always. Number one. Alright, now that our wood's dry what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and finish these out. Now I want to show you the uh, finish that we got on it from using our Muriatic acid. Now this doesn't have any burn marks on it. All I did was mark it up. I scratched it a little bit. I used my hammer. And then, of course, on this one here, we went ahead and burned it. Now, I want to tell you something about burning. I'm going to show you on another piece of wood. The more that you burn it, the more depth you're going to get of the grain because the grain is actually the core of the piece of wood. It's harder than the wood itself, if that makes any sense. So when you look at that, what we're talking about here is when you burn that, it's actually going to burn everything in between all the grain because it's softer and it's going to give you a more depth of uh, a fit. I don't know if you can see what I'm talking about there, but you can see that it has a lot of depth in it like it's been worn out. So once we have the muriatic acid that's dry, I'm going to take my steel wire brush here and I'm going to go ahead and wire brush that. Now what this is doing, this is cleaning the wood off and it's also giving it more depth. And you can also use a wire wheel on this if you don't want to use a wire brush. Um, when you're talking about making your own barn wood, you're talking about hundreds of feet because you're going to use it on a wall. And then, of course, we'll take our steel uh, brush on this. And I want to show you what this does. You can see how it's bringing out the depth of the grain and also the intensement of the wood itself by using a wire brush. 
Once again, you can use a wire wheel on this and it'll work great. And then you can see right there what we're talking about. So in reality, this piece would be done. By using the muriatic acid, that was just one more step that we took it to eat up the wood and to, to, to deteriorate the finish of it. And then you can come back with your hammer if you want, or you can use a scoring tool or whatever, but if you just want a nice, easy, simple, clean situation, that's basically what I'm talking about right there. So now we're going to get back to the one that we actually used our hammer on. We went ahead and screwed some screw holes in it. And we went ahead and hit it with muriatic acid. And you can't really tell right here, but you can see that it, the muriatic acid has eaten out the softwood and left in the hardwood. And this is where I'm going to take my torch one more time. that up. And then on this one, I'm not going to hold the flame as close to the wood as I did on this one. I'm just going to lightly heat it up. And you can see how far I'm holding the flame back. And then we're going to go ahead and turn that off. And then once again, we're going to take our wire brush and we're going to clean that wood off, getting all that loose, dead stuff off of it from burning it. And then as you see, right there, it has a natural, worn, grayish barn look to it. And it came out awesome. So, that's two ways that you can do that. Another thing you can do is take a drill, drill a hole in it. Um, I like the screw hole effect myself. And I really like to use the self-tapping uh, hex head screw due to the fact that it makes a mark around it. And it looks like it was a nail instead of a screw. So, you know, anything that you can imagine doing, you can do. Now, another thing that we're going to do is I'm going to take this piece of wood here. And I want you to look and see how smooth that is. And this is actually high-end grade pine, uh, pine wood. This is not the cheap, inexpensive stuff. Uh, one of these boards, uh, it's an eight-foot board, one board is costing us $7. So this is not the cheap stuff. This is the expensive stuff. And you can see just by looking at it, it's the nice finished stuff. So what I'm going to do with that brand new piece of wood before we close this down, is I'm going to show you how extreme you can go using a propane torch to do what you got to do. Let me get this started here. Sorry about that. Couldn't get it going. Okay, so what we're going to do, and I'm just showing you how extreme you can do to antique your wood just by using fire. torch but you can go ahead and use a propane torch and do the same effect. There we go. take our wire brush and we're going to clean it out 
And you can already see how pretty that wood works. Now remember, remember this was only pine. But I want to show you what this is going to look like. It's really, really awesome when you do this. I'm going to keep on using that. Now you can use a wire wheel. Remember, you don't have to stick with the wire brush. And you can see right there how thick the grain is and how it has, has basically raised up. That's because what we did, we burned this and the grain, remember I told you the grain is harder than the softwood. There's always a hard hardwood and a softwood together. So look at that right there. That's awesome. So this is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you a couple ways different ways how to go ahead and actually make your own barn wood out of brand new wood. Save you a lot of money and it's going to really, really look awesome and it's going to come out the way that you want it to turn out, not the way that you are going to have to buy it and hope it turns out the way that you're thinking it's going to turn out. We'll see you later. Take it easy. We got our heat, we got our wire brush, we got a piece of steel wool, we got a hammer, and that's all you need. Oh, I'm sorry, and some erratic acid to clean the wood off after you're done, depending on how you want it to look. My friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you other ways to do stuff besides making the other guy rich. Right there.